I will tell you uh, the lighter story. So the lighter story is a true story. Uh, as you guys know, I was I was a combat vet. I was in the Marine Corps for a very long time. I got out the Marines. I went to the Army. Uh, I've deployed to Iraq. Uh, once I've been to Afghanistan. My twice. dad was an Army Ranger. Oof. My grandpa was a Navy SEAL during Vietnam, and my best friend is in the Marine Corps. Get on their level, ah, scrub. There it is. There it is, Roaches, dude, with the huge super chat, man. I'm, I definitely was uh, not on any Navy SEAL or Army Ranger level. <laughs> oh, brother, I really do appreciate the love, man. That is huge. Guys, let's get some hearts in the chat. So, um, yeah, this is a real-life story, guys. So I deployed to Iraq back in 2008, um, and uh, we were going out on a combat patrol. Real simple patrol. We were driving down to um, OP. Uh, it was uh, Karma Village. That's it's called Karma. It's a little city, and uh, we we're on our way over there. And it was probably about a 35, 40 minute drive uh, over there. Even though it was because you drive really slow, uh, scout for IEDs and stuff like that. So we're on our way over. Um, my truck, unfortunately, boom, tire pops. Uh, we're right, right on the rim. We you lose tires all the time over there. We didn't. Uh, have a replacement. We actually had a, a uh, tire shortage. So we didn't have a replacement tire on the back. So we pulled over to the side of the road and we were waiting for uh, a mechanic team to come out because at this point we're only 15 minutes out. Uh, you know, we called it in, said, hey, we need a tire. And uh, they radioed it in. They told people, hey, you know, you guys are going to be sitting there for about two hours. Uh, we'll get a team out there to change your tire. You guys will be on your way. So this was midsummer, Iraq. It was hot outside oh my god it was hot so we're sitting there um it's me and my buddy weavers and i we didn't have a gun in our truck so generally what happens is uh it was a convoy of five vehicles your uh front truck has a gun middle truck has a gun end truck has a gun the other two trucks no guns so we're sitting in the gun or we're sitting in the, tr the humvee no gunner just me and him and our ac was broken no ac we're sitting there sweating our asses off uh, just dying shooting the shit so we're sitting sitting probably about 10 minutes past i'm sitting there smoking a cigarette uh i took out a cigarette you know puffing it up put my lighter up on the the little ac vent there sitting there put my cigarettes up there chit chatting with my buddy we um and I, I look across this field probably about 800 like that's uh probably like 600 meters or so out there's a bunch of buildings and there's a bunch of uh people walking around it there was this guy i remember he was wearing all black and i could see him scouting our humvee they're probably one or our, our convoy they're probably wondering what we were doing so they're sitting there scouting us out and i, I looked at my buddy we were and i was like man wouldn't that suck dude if we took fire right now like because they're so far away and we're just in the an open field like i was like it wouldn't be crazy like you know if a sniper hit us right now or if they like you know we took contact and <laughs> he was like yeah dude that'd be that'd be shit next thing i know boom freaking just popped in my face i was like oh my god so we have bulletproof glass it's about you know three four inches worth of glass but if it gets hit hard enough with a round um sometimes they'll shoot at us with like discus um anti-aircraft weapons and stuff like that and they hit that glass and it will just spider out so you get a bunch of the glass at you and next thing I, I i got peppered in the face you know what i mean uh, we're in this enclosed armored vehicle it was so loud guys i was like holy shit so I, at this point, I, I, I'm thinking, yo, we just took fire and they hit my fucking window. You know what I mean? So I, when you're in your, uh, you know, I got my armor on, you can't move. Like I'm stuck in a seat. I'm literally got my glass popped out and our glass at this point, you know, we've been shot at so much. It, you could barely see through the shit. It's all bullet holes everywhere. So I'm like, oh my God, I can't get out. I don't want to take a shot. Uh, so I'm like trying to lean out. And I was like, screw this. So I opened the door. I get out on the side of the truck because I'm like, I don't want another round to hit the window. And I'm like, Weavers, are you good? Are you good? He's like, yeah. And he's like laying down in there, like trying to stay as low as possible because he gets out on the driver's side. He's exposed to where the, the shot came from. So he's just laying down in this driver's side, trying to be as flat as possible. And um, I'm like, are you good? He's like, yeah, I'm good. So I'm sitting down there and I'm, I'm trying to peek up. I'm trying to peek up and I'm trying to see. And, uh, you know, the convoy the rest of the convoys behind us spread out so my freaking goofy ass squad leader corporal spanos at the time um you see him literally just do 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 like bounding from truck to truck and uh he like runs up to me he gets down and he's like what's going on what's going on i'm like i'm like hey corporal we just took a shot you know what i mean like a uh, sniper fire sniper fire now when you're american military we take snipers very very serious so 
if you are engaged by a sniper, you call that into battalion. That's a high level thing because that they have to notify all the units in the area. They have to notify everybody. They'll call in air support. They'll call in all types of shit to deal with snipers. And um, at this time, we actually had a couple snipers that were picking off guys um, in our AO. So they take sniper calls very, very seriously. And um, so I'm like, we took a shot from a sniper. Uh, you know, this shit's crazy. It, it went through my window, blah, blah, blah. So he's sitting there and he's fucking looking up and he's like, where did it hit? Where did it hit? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't see it. You know, it just popped, boom, glass. I, I, I just got off the truck. I was like, I don't know, up there somewhere. So he's looking, he's looking. He's like, dude, I don't see anything. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? So I fucking, I look up and I'm looking at the window and sure enough, there, there was nothing there. And I'm like, Am, am I hallucinating? You know what I mean? So that, that started popping in my head. And then I turn around, guys, as he's telling me this, because it was one of those realization moments. Like, you're like, wait, am I, you know, am I losing my mind? What's going on? So I, I turn around, I look up at a gunner, and he's literally just sitting, literally lean back like this, guys, fucking headphones in, just chilling, right? And I, I'm like, wait, he would have heard the gunshot. If it was a sniper fire, he would have heard the impact on my window. He would have seen it. He's literally, you know, rolled right up on like the MRAP is they sit really high. So he's rolled right up on the back of me. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? You know, is, is he I'm losing my shit. So at this point, they radioed to battalion, but it didn't get any further than that. So they didn't call in any air support. They didn't call in the QRF. Um, so my corporal runs back and he tells my LT, he's like, dude, there's nothing there. Uh, false alarm. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm feeling like a fucking idiot at this point. But I spooked our LT so bad that they were like, just drive on the rim. We're going to turn around. We're going to head back to base. They canceled the mission, right? They, they was like, just ride on the rim. Um, you know, you're going to rip up the tire. We'll just replace it when we get back to base. So uh, they canceled the mission. We literally turn around. We ride back on a flat. And now as we're going back, guys, I'm literally feeling like an idiot. Cause I'm like, yo, this is on me. Like I just did this. Um, I'm like, I, I turned my buddy, we were, so I'm like, dude, you heard it, right? Cause I'm trying to like come up with a story. Cause when I get back here, they're going to fucking fry me. So I, 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 I'm like, dude, you heard it. He's like, yeah, man, I heard it. I don't know. I don't know what happened. So I'm like, fuck dude, this is so stupid. So I, I sit back, I grab my fucking cigarettes, put my cigarette in my mouth, looking around. Where the fuck is my lighter at? And I'm like, oh, I probably knocked it down in the commotion. Right? So I'm looking on the floor. I don't fucking see. I'm like, dude, where the hell is my lighter at? I look on the floor again, and all of a sudden, I start seeing all these little, it was one of those, uh, I had one of those clear green lighters. It was 100% clear. Like, uh, So I'm like, I start seeing all these little green specks all over the floor. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And sure enough, I see the, the, the metal part with a little bit of green sticking down from it on the lighter. And I'm like, and it instantly clicked. What happened was when I put my cigarettes and my lighter up on that vent, like I said, it was hot, guys. The sun was just magnifying through the bulletproof glass, and it just heated the lighter up so much. That motherfucker popped. Literally, it popped in my face. The, the pieces of the lighter, you know, hit me all over the face. So it literally popped, exploded in an enclosed armored vehicle, and it was loud. So the, the lighter fucking explodes. I catch the, you know, the pieces of the lighter. And sure enough, guys, my goddamn lighter exploded in my face. And I thought it was a fucking sniper. <laughs> I thought I took a shot to my window. So we get back and, um, you know, it was probably like a week later. We were doing an award ceremony. And um, I'm standing in formation. I haven't heard any. You know, my buddies were making fun of me or whatever for like a week or so. But we're standing in formation. We're doing an award ceremony. And uh, next thing I know, our sergeant major's like, you know, calls the whole battalion to attention. Where's the idiot that got shot at by the lighter? And I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm talking like literally there was whole companies here, guys, companies, hundreds and hundreds of Marines. I'm like, oh my God, are you fucking serious? I'm like, here's Sergeant Major. And he's just like, you know, uh, fucking get up here. So I go up there and legit, guys, they called my ass to attention. They had a fucking full blown award letter that they typed up. They had a ribbon, right? It was a combat, a Navy and Marine Corps combat action ribbon that they glued a full size fucking lighter to. They super glued the lighter to it. All right. And, uh, yeah, they read me my, you know, 
the, the whole fucking award orders, everything. I had to salute, and they gave me the combat action lighter ribbon in front of a whole company or a whole battalion of Marines. It was so embarrassing, guys. So embarrassing. And then uh, <laughs> everybody would come up to me all the time for like a month, guys. People would come up, hey, man, can, can I get a light? Can I get a light? And I, I that that fucking followed me for so long. It, it was it was really embarrassing. But uh, yeah, that's the lighter story, guys.